All around the world, people know ECROM for having pioneered training and techniques for cultural heritage conservation over many years. But why was ECROM established and how did this small organization come to have such a vast mission? After World War II, with so many cities and landscapes in ruin, those tasked with rebuilding began to raise questions about where to start. What do we conserve? What do we reconstruct or restore? How do we do this? These questions, together with the economic expansion of the 1950s, brought into sharp perspective the dire need for sound methodologies for heritage protection. In short, this in turn led to a push for the establishment of an international body which would collect and circulate information, coordinate research, train professionals, and provide scientific and technical advice. And so, the Rome Center, or ECROM as we now call it, was born. But let's go back a few years to before Ikron's birth to talk about what led up to it. UNESCO was founded in 1945, just after the Second World War. One of its major tasks was to create an international network of organizations able to provide technical and scientific capabilities to restore and rebuild damaged heritage. La première de ces organisations est l'ICOM, le Conseil international des musées. Cette association professionnelle va aider l'UNESCO dans la mise en œuvre de son programme pour les musées. Même si à l'époque on entend par musée tout le patrimoine en général, l'ICOM se rend vite compte qu'il est nécessaire de créer une entité séparée dédiée aux monuments. C'est ainsi qu'en 1950, l'UNESCO va créer, sur proposition de l'ICOM, le Comité Consultatif International pour les Monuments. La même année, on demanda à ce nouveau comité d'étudier une proposition du Mexique pour la création d'une taxe touristique qui alimenterait un fonds international placé sous le contrôle de l'UNESCO et destiné à l'entretien du patrimoine culturel d'intérêt universel. Même si finalement cette proposition fut abandonnée, les discussions qu'elle suscita débouchèrent sur une nouvelle idée, proposée cette fois par la Suisse. Pourquoi ne pas offrir une assistance technique et de la formation plutôt qu'une aide financière C'est ainsi qu'en 1951, la Suisse a proposé, par l'intermédiaire du directeur Frédéric Gizin du Musée national suisse de Zurich, la création d'un centre international pour l'étude scientifique des problèmes de conservation et de restauration des biens culturels de toute nature. This proposal began to gain momentum and in 1952, the General Conference of UNESCO authorized its Director General to investigate the idea in collaboration with ICOM and ACM. Georges-Henri Riviere, the renowned French museologist and the director of ICOM, was appointed to chair the subcommittee that would carry out this investigation. Between 1953 and 1954, this subcommittee defined the functions, the type of membership, and the affiliations such a centre would have. The Laboratoire Central des Musées de Belgique in Brussels and the Instituto Centrale del Restauro in Rome were both worthy candidates as national institutions to which the new centre could attach itself. 
Jan Karel van der Hagen, chief of the Division of Museums and Monuments at UNESCO, was commissioned to visit Belgium and Italy and to report back with recommendations. In 1955, considering the offers made by Belgium and Italy, the UNESCO Executive Board decided to choose Italy as the location for the center. The next year, that is in 1956, at the ninth session of UNESCO's General Conference in New Delhi, the decision to create the International Center for the study of the preservation and restoration of cultural property was adopted unanimously. In 1957, UNESCO and the Italian government signed an agreement which institutionalized ICRAM on the Italian territory. The agreement set the preliminary terms of the collaboration with the major institution dealing with cultural heritage conservation in Italy. Among them, the Istituto Centrale del Restauro and the Opificio delle Pietre Dure. However, the center would not come formally into existence until the five member states had adhered to it. So thanks to Österreich, Republica Dominicana, España, Al Maghreb, Polska, Ikram was brought to life. The next step was sorting out governance. So, until the initial member state could meet at the first ever General Assembly of the Centre, the statutory powers were exercised by a provisional council nominated by UNESCO in 1958. This council was composed of At its first meeting in December 1958, the Provisional Council appointed as director Dr. Harold James Plenderlith, a chemist, an archaeologist, and the visionary keeper of research laboratories at the British Museum. The first personnel entered the center in early 1959, and from that moment on, the center was operational. General Assembly of Ikram took place in Rome in December 1960. This was an important moment in the life of the organization as experts of the international community and 21 member states finally had the possibility to discuss matters of common interest. Sixty years later, Ikram has continued with its role to develop common methodologies and approaches towards the preservation of heritage. As we expand our number of member states and partner institutions, and thanks to modern technology, we continue to evolve to 
to meet emerging needs and promote diversity in everything we do. Providing innovative solutions to contemporary issues, strengthening professionals and their skills, and strengthening the institutions, shifting mindsets, and creating leaders for the future. As it was then, it is now. Happy anniversary, Ikram. Buon anniversario, Ikram. Ay, Ikram. Feliz aniversario. Feliz aniversario, Ikrom. Feliz aniversario, Ikrom. Feliz aniversario, Ikrom. Desde Perú.